Hey everybody, welcome to the next commentary playing Zoe Midlane versus Azir this game. Uh, with Hail of Blades, this guy definitely has actually really good runes for like being able to solo kill, has Ignite as well. Not only that, but they have Wukong Jungle, and I think Wukong Jungle is actually pretty damn strong, especially for ganking versus champions like me who are don't have dashes. Being able to stealth in from a brush and then just uh, immediately jumping on me and doing probably about like 150 to 200 damage basically instantly uh, with a point and click ability is going to be rough if we're flashless. <clears throat> but yeah, Azir isn't that bad of a champion, to be honest. Uh, not sure why people don't play him a bit more often. He's been getting buffed a lot, too. So he actually has pretty high base HP, I think it is, that they buffed and stuff. So uh, he has Hail of Blades. So basically, he's going to throw down a soldier, try to auto attack me three times, and that that deals a lot of damage. It it actually deals a lot. So paying attention to him, he used two soldiers, so I should be OK here to step up for a second. The next soldier should refresh. See how he had another one there, but just waiting for this one to expire now. Honestly, I think that this matchup is actually difficult early on and becomes early, better uh, the longer the matchup goes, so... So far, he's been not doing good with his soldiers. He should have been able to at least hit me once with them. Right here, I'll just tank it. And we'll just trade back with him. The thing is that if I just backed away and don't trade back, I will actually have an even worse trade than what I just did. So, I have to go versus him, basically. Okay, we get his flash. Is that worth it? I'm not really sure, but this game was like going in for a really cheesy-ass gank, but he wasn't able to follow it up. But we got his flash, so it's whatever. Got that guy. This guy has no flash, and he has no E, so we don't even need to worry about him jumping away. Can just auto-attack that guy down. We're very lucky that I was able to... Okay, so... I didn't know if Wukong already used his clone. If he cloned my bubble, we would have lost that fight. For sure. I'm pretty sure. For sure, I'm pretty sure. Because I think that we would have been in a scenario where maybe Kane can escape. Where he can go through the wall. But the issue is that Wukong actually still deals a lot of damage. I just miss Cannon for no reason. I'm not hard shoving because I actually can't push fast enough. Believe it or not. It's just too difficult. So I'm just trying to get most of the wave. And I was uh, letting it push towards me, so Azir missed a little bit of creeps here. And I missed a balloon. That's really bad. <sighs> you never know what balloons might have. It could have Ignite, so I could play aggressive. It could have a heal, so I can stay in lane longer. It could have a Ghost, which is perfect for resetting, so I can Ghost back to lane very quickly. So, losing a balloon is kind of game-changing. Kind of game-changing. We're not trying to win lane anymore. We're trying to reset. Because I already got what I wanted, which was two assists. So, I'm extremely interested in resetting. Am I going to get help resetting? Probably not. Should I? Probably. There is a chance that he actually will uh, start slow pushing it towards me rather than freezing. I'm seeing if he does by backing away, pretending that I'm resetting. But if he doesn't touch the wave, it's actually pretty bad for me. I really want to reset. All I want is the wave to be pushed in all the way. So if I can just have somebody help me. Without dying to Wukong gank at the same time. The thing is Azir could be spam pinging for his teammate to come. Because sometimes that happens. He doesn't want me to reset. He wants me to be inside the bad lane state for as long as possible, but I don't want it myself, so that's why I ping for assistance. Even though it wasn't Kane who came, I'm so happy that Bard came to help me out. 
I bought level 2 boots, so hopefully we can do maybe a bit of roaming type plays, possibly. I don't know how realistic it is to actually kill a Fiora. She has one of the best abilities in the game versus a, um... My bubble. Because you can perfectly time it every time, uh, to give yourself a free stun. But if he can burn it beforehand, the Vladimir burn it, then maybe I can. I think Vlad is dead. Oh no, he's not. Oh, she was only level 5. I thought she was 6 and ultied him, so she's just going to chase him down, but I guess... I guess not. Wukong is also top. Okay, he's level 4. Oh, wow. I was really hoping that the AoE damage would hit the Azir there, but... A little sad that I missed Bubble there. He was kind of standing still. I was hoping that he would juke himself into it, but... Okay, so versus Azir, sometimes he'll try to insect you underneath the tower. Uh, you can counter that. Just do not use your portal jump. Save it. When he jumps on you, immediately portal jump. Uh, because normally they'll throw out their ulti as soon as they're on top of you. If they're smart in playing around it, they won't. Damn, dude, I can't believe I died. <sighs> the minions just did a little bit too much damage. I guess I could have burned my flash to make it so I was able to land a bit more. He knew that I would be able to kill him if he ran away, so he turned around to fight, because that's the only way that he could ever fight me. I was, like, very close to living. Very close. Because if he died just a little bit earlier, I would have only had two more ticks of Ignite on me. <sighs> Damn. He does have no ultimate now, though. Normally, you cannot... Like, that's not even worth. I guess Kane just wanted his form. That's like the only possible explanation that I have for playing that aggressive underneath tower like that. So he, he must have gotten a ton of Kane orbs. So he will transform very soon, which is really nice for him. No way that they all live like that. Wow. Well, maybe I can get there. I doubt it. They probably are running back to their base. They should already be, like, around here. What? <laughs> they didn't run all the way back. Oh, yeah, but still can't catch them, though. So now Azir is actually stronger than me, because we only got one kill and he got two. And he got the experience from it as well, so... Bit annoying, but is what it is. Used his E to jump away, so there was no opportunity to actually hit him with a Q. Renata is mid. His Q missed again, thankfully. I'm guessing this is warded, otherwise I don't understand why he would step that way. So this is probably warded. Um, he had no flash, so I'm a little sad that we didn't manage to get the shutdown for ourselves, but whatever. Um, 
The reason why that worked out was because when I portal jumped, you might have noticed that he gave himself a shield. That's from his dash. So basically he dashed into me, so then he doesn't have a dash anymore. So that's what happened. So we just got a, a free kill, basically. I'll actually stay. Just shove as fast as I can and just immediately reset. This will just make it so I won't miss as many creeps because I was resetting when a wave was like already crashing. So at least now when I reset, I'm not going to miss as many creeps. The bad news is that my teammates are really posturing for a fight on my reset. So that really sucks for me, but I can re- what good is good is that I got to buy another item. Like, uh, that's very nice. This blue buff is really owning me here. Okay, well I got the blue buff, but... Why is Tristana not coming? We actually could have fought that. She has everything. That was that was actually a good fight for us. We could have definitely uh, tried to win it. <laughs> That's really sad, man. That's actually really sad. I tried. If that bubble lands, maybe I can follow it up. But it didn't. Um, hmm. I rooted him, but... Game players and taking cannons, bro. That almost was me dying. If I got hit by that, I bet she had ultimate. It's not even going to crash. Oh, man. I really wish that we fought the dragon. I had both of my sums available. Tristana had ultimate. I think it could have been game changing. Hopefully Vlad's scaling well. Yep, he's dead. <laughs> Damn. Well, Azir doesn't have his Ludens, so that's kind of cool. Pop Corrupting Potion for the movement speed. I think she's gone, man. Yeah, we tried. Even if that lands, we probably couldn't follow it up anyways. We should have just stayed mid instead. I just wasted a ton of time. If that bubble landed, I might have been able to kill. I have Ludens in base. I have to go get it. Might as well. We used all of our potions. Actually, if Trisana's not coming mid, 
I was only going to be fine with it as long as my teammates are collecting the wave instead of me, and then I was going to go buy it, but they're actually going top, so... I'll actually wait to reset on a better wave. And now, I will try to get to the Rift Herald in time, because that is the next thing that everybody is nearby, so... I guess we lose mid tower here. Nobody's defending it. We're only focusing on like running towards top tower, it seems. Kane got it, maybe? Nice, okay, cool. Not not losing mid tower is pretty pretty big. She used flash. That guy's dead. I can bubble him. Oh, I cannot bubble him. Sorry, bro. I had to wait for my next Q. I got him with the flash, though. Oh, Kaiso, please. Jesus Christ. I already know. You also have a Gale Force as well. This guy is absolutely terrifying. She's super fed as well. Hmm. Mm, I guess I can take this plant. I was like, just mentally preparing myself for any Kaisa W, but nothing came out. I'm so sad. My blue. What? Damn, I don't know how that didn't hit either of you. I really thought it would. Ah, oh, he stole it. Bubble. She's dead too. Okay, Kaisa died as well. Nice. Big. That was a full HP Wukong. I mean, it sucks that we lost the dragon though. But we had a really good fight there. We managed to land some pretty juicy bubbles on important targets like the Azir. So. Nice. Good pick. Dude, I've been part of 13 kills this game out of 15. I did not realize how high my KP is. Wow. Alright, they're building magic resist. I'm just going to immediately build a void staff. Um, If you guys don't know, it's like... If... It, it might seem troll where there's only like one person. Two people have Merc Treads. And they might build more MR, possibly on some other targets as well. But Void Staff is very cost effective, even if people build no MR. It's surprisingly, it's not as strong as other items, but it's only a little bit weaker. So basically, I'll be dealing way more. I want to assist. Wow, I couldn't even auto attack because she went into the brush. Uh, I'll be dealing a lot more to the magic resist. And then I'll be dealing a little bit less to the ones that have absolutely zero magic resist. So it's not that bad, actually, to buy it, even when there's only like a couple targets that have it. It's actually still pretty damn cost effective. I hope uh, Vlad can survive versus Azir. Close, we almost got him. 
But he did jump away, so... He didn't have a dash again. Let's keep following the team around. Look for more picks. I can actually just continue looking over this wall. Uh, they see where I'm at, though. I guess Vlad is just dead. Like, he's super... How does he even have a shutdown? Damn. Oh, that was so close to hitting Wukong. Anyways, I have a Void Staff. Uh, Dragon's going to come up in a minute 30. I just want to be on the map way beforehand so we can be looking for opportunities to hit people before the Dragon spawns. So we can get better vision control and stuff because of that. If I chunk somebody out, that means we can like walk into their vision because they'll have to reset. Of course, I can only do it with my teammates nearby as well, though. What is your fuel confident enough to just face check? To put down his own vision control? If I land bubble, I just win. Mm. Cleanse is actually completely useless. There is actually, like, not a single champion that I need to... That has cleansable stuff. Maybe Renata Q. That's it. Um, why are we so focused on topside? Do we not really care about the dragon at all? Huh, okay, well, so dragon's gone then. We can 3v4 Drake. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I'll try it solo queue, why not, man? No, oh, I tried landing the bubble, but it didn't. What? Oh, she flashed over. I'm not doing it, dude. That person's not even worth a shutdown. I don't care. The Kaisa Q is on a low cooldown. So, me possibly giving up my shutdown isn't even worth it. I had a feeling she might be in that brush, which is why I started walking towards it and then didn't walk in it and threw an ability because I was hoping she would run out thinking that I'm going to face check it. So I was like trying to anticipate her killing me as I walk into the brush, but unfortunately uh, she didn't do that, so she didn't walk in. Nice Vlad. And they're also walking straight in. I mean, it kind of sucks that Vlad got stunned from Kane W. That's not really... Not really Vlad's fault there, but that's okay. Yeah, we get the Baron for sure. They have nobody that really can contest 1v5, I think. They do have Azir and Kai'Sa, but I do have Stopwatch available, and I don't mind using my own body to make it so they can't even walk in. Ah, of course it doesn't land. I hate it when it's just barely away. Okay, this guy should be dead. Just use Gale Force afterwards. Nice, should be game. That's a game winning type fight because, um... Baron's just worth so much and allows the game to be easily finished. Dude, that was a lot of damage. Remember, that guy has a lot of magic resist as well. Like, if, if I hit him with a Q with a different item, that would have done way less. That's the effectiveness of building Void Staff early. 
It's like he doesn't have magic resist at all, magic resist at all basically. All right. Well, all we need to do is just siege any tower together. So we can really go mid or wherever. Um, the only risk is getting flanked or zero like insects, a bunch of people underneath tower or something. That actually hit the correct person. So many flashes. Just keep fishing for abilities. All I need is one stick. What the? She didn't even move. I hit that guy though. Oh, ouch. Okay, she missed. That's good. Take it. Ow, by the way. Jesus Christ, that damage, man. Oh, that guy's dead. One more Kaisa Kuna. Dead. Oh my god, that guy also just looked for W on me as well. I'm pretty sure this must be warded. Otherwise, they don't understand why they would even be throwing it here. The good news is that even though all I'm doing is just throwing abilities at people, they're focusing so much on not even walking up to the wave to get hit that we just can push the waves. I guess they just feel too pressured to ever step up. Uh, that, that hit. Nice. Well, anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the commentary. Pretty standard Zoe carry in terms of like, I won the game just by doing better inside of team fights earlier to the point that my teammates get ahead, and then I'm not the carry anymore. I'm just around. A lot of people don't understand that. Uh, I mentioned this inside of a different video or on stream. Uh, Zoe is kind of a you play it. It's a supportive mid laner. You're not a. Every champion is a carry if they get fed enough. But at the end of the day, she's similar to Ari Lux in terms of you play off of picking people. In most cases, you're not one-shotting people from one screen away. You're That's only if you're fed. Most of the time, you're just throwing out your bubbles and hoping that your teammates can follow up the things that you land. So you're kind of playing a... That's a control mage style. A supportive type deal where you try to win team fights through poke plus CC in Zoe's case, if it's Orianna, through one big ultimate, if it's Syndra. Like, just outperforming DPS and maybe a big stun or something. It's unlike playing Fizz, where you kind of just jump into the... To assassinate one person and then... Finish people off afterwards. I didn't know who to honor. I just honored somebody random. So yeah, once... Oh, dude, look at the Vlad damage. It could be very high also, because... Um, damage charts don't matter at all, by the way. Zoe's damage is always inflated, because I'm poke. Um... So, never assume that damage charts actually tell a story, unless, like, somebody's hard carrying and stuff, but the thing is that uh, laning phase can really inflate damage numbers in melee versus range matchups as well. Vlad is probably always constantly hitting this guy. Or if, if you're playing, like, Camille into Orn, like, you're just on, constantly hitting him with your Qs, it can really inflate damage numbers. So, honestly... It's not even, there's no reason to really show it, but I do anyways, because I feel like people like looking at it. Regardless though, hopefully you guys enjoyed the commentary, and if you did, drop a like on the video, and I will see you guys next time.